That's bad. That's really, really bad. It's just fun. It's just fun, fun, fun to read. We're, we're getting down a few. Another one bites the dust. Don't know what she's saying. I didn't know she sang. I thought she rapped or whatever. I don't know if I'm feeling it. <laughs> Later in the week, you need your hair to be at a certain point for a certain thing, but your current hair washing schedule is not on the right trajectory, and it's just, it's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> Besties. <laughs> if you are here regularly, you'll know I am trying to finish as many series as I can this year. I'm trying to get down to only 26 ongoing series by the end of the year, which still sounds like a lot, but I think that's like what is realistic. I just want to get that number down quickly because I've started a few series this year, which means <laughs> I need to finish more. You in danger, girl. And I wanna like get the number down in one fell swoop. So I decided the perfect way to do that is to finish a couple of the duologies that are on my series list. You guys have pointed out to me a couple times, I have quite a few duologies where I've read the first book and I'm like, let's just bish bash bosh. Bish bash bosh, read one book each of those duologies and then the duology is finished. I mean, come on now. The best thing about winning, it's when you win. <laughs> So yeah, this will get our number down by three, one fell swoop. I love that for me, I love it for me so much. So what we're gonna be reading, first we have got The Monarchs by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. This is the sequel to The Ravens. It's like a sorority of witches who like have each other's back and they're like, bestie, I'll do anything for you. I really enjoyed the first one in this series so much more than I kind of could have anticipated. It just did YA so well, right? And it's set at college. I appreciate having older characters in YA. I think that's something we need to do more of. I mean, I love, college is like a, an interesting time. I love YA set at college. I love adult books set at college because I think you can kind of straddle that line and you can easily kind of sanitize, not sanitize college, but like, you know, write from it from a wider perspective or you can like ham up the murder, sex, drugs, like whatever you want. <laughs> then we got a little novella because my reading has not been going the quickest this year. <laughs> Let's be fucking honest. I'm ashamed. I hasn't been going very quick. I've been struggling. <laughs> so I thought throwing this in the mix would be good. We've got Drowned Country by Emily Tesh. I love this cover so much. I think it's such an interesting cover. It's so weird. These novellas are about these beings, these men who live in this forest. It's very difficult to, to pitch this, especially because my memory of the first book, I'm going to be honest, not quite there. <laughs> I don't think I'll manage to find a recap for the first one because it is more niche. Um, my memory of the first one isn't great, but I'm hoping I'll still be able to enjoy this. It's got a very like fairy tale, dreamy style of writing in these. And then I feel like a lot of you are going to be happy to see the last one, which is Muse of Nightmares by Lenny Taylor. I remember when I finished Change to Dreamer, I said I had to read this straight away. I evidently have not done that. It's been over a year, two years maybe. <laughs> Yeah, he's terrible, Your Honor. He's really terrible. That's bad. That's really, really bad. But we are going to finish this. We're following Laszlo Strange, who, um... Uh, he loves, I can't remember the plot then. He's obsessed with the mythical lost city of Weep, but then he gets to go there. There's also some stuff to do with, like, gods and stuff but I won't say anything more about that and listen Lenny Taylor has the most beautiful lyrical writing so I'm very excited to get to this I think I will find a recap for Strange Dreamer and I think I'm gonna reread the last maybe 50 pages of Strange Dreamer because that wrecked me <laughs> I'm not going to reread the whole book, but I'm going to read the last 50 pages again because I want myself to then start this straight away in the mindset of like pure devastation. <laughs> <laughs> that Strange Dreamer put me in. So that's the plan. We're gonna read them in that order, I think. And listen, I'm just gonna be so happy. I will tell you actually at the end of this what, how many series I'm currently reading, what number we're at. Cause <laughs> we've got like half the year to get down to 26. So let's just get reading. I am just under halfway through The Monarchs. I'm on page 195 and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> The thing is, right, so in this sequel, obviously the first one, we're at the sorority of witches and we're still very much in that setting. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil anything that happened in the first one, but we're still in this witchy sorority and they're trying to, you know, help the sorority survive and help each other. And, okay, <laughs> it kind of feels like this series should be longer because it doesn't feel like much has happened. Like I've read half of the final book, the hair, the hair today. I went into the hairdresser today for a consultation and I was looking myself in the mirror and I was like, dear God. 
the fucking hair is frazzled. Yeah, I've read half of the, the second, you know, the last book, and it doesn't feel like we're particularly close to anything important happening. In this book, there's kind of like some unknown malevolent thing to do with the magic that we don't really understand that's affecting how they do their magic. We've got a lot of different romances, a lot of different, like we've got a love triangle, there's a lot of different stuff going on. But I'm enjoying it, but it kind of feels like a cosy read. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's a very good YA, I think. I'm not reading it thinking this is like dumbed down. Like I think a lot of different ages of YA, even if you're, you know, an adult and read YA, I think to 12 year olds could all enjoy this and really take something away from it. That's a testament to the author's writing considering they, you know, I feel like all those different audiences can really enjoy it. I also do enjoy reading a YA set at a college. I think, you know, high school is one thing, but I feel like some people think that college, because you're 18, that should always be adult but you still feel like a child. <laughs> like Scarlet, I think, must be like 21 in this book, but it's still written through the lens of YA and I think it works really well and I would love to see more YAs set at college because people go through different stages. Some people become very much adults at uni and I feel like some people kind of stay the same person they were when they were 18. So I think you need both, right? Because we love dark academia, murder, drugs, betrayal, kind of genre at college, but I feel like there's also a lot of space for this. Um, I really love the characters, I really love their relationships. It's a kind of book that I feel like I can't read critically. Often I'm kind of reading with a half pure enjoyment view <laughs> and half like left brain, right brain, half critical and thinking what I'm gonna say to you guys. And I feel like I can't really read this critically. It's just like a fun, comfort read that I don't really have to think too much about and that I'm just really enjoying so <laughs> I'm just having a lot of fun reading it and I I really like the setting I love this college setting of these girls there's a lot of girls I'm not gonna lie I don't always know who, know who all they are like who is she who is she where did you find her we say Bailey Reagan like I don't know who any of these girls are I'm gonna be very honest with you I don't know the backstory but they're just there and it's like enough I'm not like going, oh, I don't remember who you are, so that doesn't make sense. Like, I just know they're another girly there, and that's fine. We're part of the group. We're part of the group. It's just fun. It's just fun, fun, fun to read. And I think it's a very solid YA geology that, like I said, a lot of different people can read. So I'm going to go ahead and finish it. Maybe tonight? I have the audiobook. So um, I'm going to try and finish it tonight if I can. And I'll probably check in with you in the morning on what my thoughts on it are. headaches <laughs> if like I'm not coherent don't ever go at me but I finished the monarchs I really enjoyed it I'm gonna give it four stars I was saying I did reading sprints yesterday with Aaron which was so much fun I was thinking because I do weekly reading sprints every single week on my patreon I don't do them publicly anymore and I actually miss it it was a lot of fun so I think maybe I'll try and do more going forward I don't think this is the kind of book you're ever gonna give five stars right like it's nothing spectacular I don't think it's anything that hasn't been done before but I think it just does what it's saying it's gonna do really well you know it definitely reminds me of like um Buffy and like 90s rom-coms kind of 90s rom-coms with the romance elements of it and Buffy with like the spookiness and the sleuthing and like oh my god we're teenage like I don't know like witches and stuff like I think <laughs> that's a really fun element and as someone who loves Buffy the Vampire Slayer it's really fun to kind of read stuff that feels like references to it throughout. I will also say I really appreciate morally grey characters. I feel like this has quite a few like our main characters Scarlet and Vivi perhaps not they're morally grey characters but they do morally grey things or things that as, as a reader you're like <laughs> I am very uncomfortable with the energy that we've created in the studio today. But you can 100% understand why they're choosing to do that because they're doing all of this. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> they're doing all of this to like protect each other 
and their sisterhood and like the family and the sorority. So you can understand why they're making those choices, but they're not perfect, right? Sometimes I feel like in YA, the author wants you to love the characters so, so much that they make them like perfect, like can never make a mistake. If anything goes wrong in the story, it's not their fault. And I'm just fed up with that shit, you know? I enjoy seeing them and really seeing their thought processes behind making these iffy decisions. Yeah, on the whole, I feel like it does a lot of classic YA tropes and YA plot beats, but just does it well. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel like, when I'm in reading it, I'm like, yeah, I have read all this before. Like I have encountered this stuff before, but it feels expertly plotted and beat out. Like when writers, they usually talk about plot beats. And I wonder if it's because it is co-written, they had to really like plan it out and get each other on the same page so when they wrote separate stuff maybe and came together it all made sense so it feels like it's been like plotted out within an inch of its life but it's all just perfectly linking together so a really nice duology a duology that I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did so we're after a success baby it's another series finish which is such a success also on the live yesterday I did knock off a few series I decided I wasn't going to finish the Nancy Drew mysteries because they're just very difficult to get my hands on I than physically and I did want to read them audibly and it's just like impossible to do that now and there was another series what was the other series I knocked off can't remember there was another series I got rid of off my series spreadsheet so we're, we're getting down a few another one bites the dust don't know what she's saying I didn't know she sang I thought she rapped or whatever I'm gonna start drowned country by Emily Tesh one of my favorite covers ever I just love it and I'm just really excited I'm gonna go sit in the garden for a bit read this live my best life <laughs> And I'll probably just check in with you when I'm finished. This is a fantasy series following these two men who are kind of like tied to the woods. That's all I'll say because I don't want to spoil anything. And yeah, I'm very excited. It's going to be like fantastical, dreamy, fairy tale, etc. So I'm very excited to dive in. Right. <laughs> if you didn't watch my last video that just came out, welcome to the new camera. I'm very pleased with it. I finished Drowned Country by Emily Tesh. And I have some thoughts. <laughs> I initially, when I was reading this, I was like, wow, I have fucked up here. I have well and truly fucked up here. Oh, no. This has now gone downhill. Because I have left it too long between reading this and reading, if I can get it out, it's literally right here, Silver in the Wood, right? I read this, I think, towards the end of 2020. And I was like, I'm so confused. I don't understand a single thing that's going on. Like, <laughs> but... Turns out, I think a lot of time passes between these two books. And the first half of this, we're kind of just like, things are being said, things, events are being alluded to. And I was like, I have just truly forgotten everything. But turns out in the second half of this book, we then learn what happened in the time that passed, which is just a crazy way to write a book for me. Like, listen, I'm, when I'm reading a sequel, I'm coming in confused. Usually sequels, there's an airplane outside, apologies if you can hear it. Usually in sequels, there's a little bit at the start of like helping to reacquaint you with where you are. It doesn't have to be like a full on recap, but usually the author does it in a very clever way where they're kind of just getting you back into the mood of where you are, what's going on. This did the opposite. It said, bitch, let me confuse you. Uh, let me have, let me make you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, that totally seems correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Like what? So that annoys me <laughs> about this book. By the way, I haven't said what I'm giving it. I'm giving it three stars. Yeah, that feels right. Also, this is written from a different perspective than this one. This first book, because of the perspective it's written from, is very like whimsical and melancholic. And this is very like witty and clever and jokey, still with that beautiful writing, but it's a different point of view. And I just don't know if I like that. I kind of wanted to stay in the same perspective. It still is beautiful writing. There are a few moments that I enjoyed about it, but it took me a fucking week to read. It I've been working on this for five weeks. It took me a fucking week to read and it's 100 pages. I just didn't care to pick it up. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm struggling at the moment with wanting to read. We need to do something. I'm going on holiday in two weeks. There's no point, like, overhauling my life before then. <laughs> it's like when people are like, oh, Christmas is in two weeks, so I'm not going on diet yet. That's how I feel. I'm not overhauling my reading yet. We're just trying to get through it. But I've been struggling to, like, find the motivation to read. I think it's because I feel a bit shit about my channel. I feel a bit shit about everything. I've just been in a funk this whole year in myself and I've been struggling to break out of it. This hasn't been a great year for me. And so, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just didn't 
entice me. It was fine. It was enjoyable to read. There wasn't, you know, once I actually made myself read, but they, even then I had to listen to the audiobook. Originally I was like, I'm just going to read it physically because that's how I read and enjoyed this. But in the end I had to get the audiobook. Well, it was on script, but I had to listen to the audiobook because otherwise I was not focusing. And even then I would read for 10 minutes and then it would lose my focus. But uh, yeah, listen, at least we finished the duology. At least it's another series finished. That in itself is a success. So yeah, anyway, we're gonna get into the last duology of this video, which means reading Muse of Nightmares, which is the sequel to Strange the Dreamer. And I would like, it's Saturday, I would like to probably try and read this over the weekend and not uh, read it for much longer because I've got a lot of other reading to do over the next couple days. So yeah. <laughs> pages into Muse of Nightmares. I don't know if I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. Okay, what happened? Maybe I'll cry. This is the issue, right? I do worry that I left it too long <sighs> between reading the first one and reading this one, but I'm just not feeling it. I don't feel like the writing is as wonderful as I rem remember it being in the first book. And the first book does a lot of like working up to this romance, right? Setting up this romance. And I'm not feeling the romance. <laughs> so in this book, it's like come to fruition. And I just don't, I feel uncomfortable with the scenes of them together. I'm like, oh no. Like I feel like they're strangers. Like I don't, feel this romantic connection that is supposed to be there and so I just don't like <laughs> I feel like I'm reading a romance book that I'm like uncomfortable with you know what I mean like I'm not buying it so that's a problem it's a problem it's a big problem and I feel like we haven't not much has happened in the first hundred pages I don't feel like I mean the first book ends on such an amazing cliffhanger I don't feel like that has really been taken advantage of in the way that I would like. I mean, I don't know what I wanted to happen, but that ain't my job. <laughs> I've read the first hundred pages and I'm like, well, we've kind of been a bit stagnant. Not much has happened. So at the moment, it's like a three star. I'm not really feeling it. It reminds me of how I felt about Daughter of Smoke and Bone, which I gave a three star versus how I feel about Strange to Dreamer, which I really like. And that, that is, I mean, the problem with Lainey Taylor for me has always been that I love her writing in terms of just like prose and the style of writing, probably one of my favorite writers out there, but I always have a problem, even in Strange Dreamer with the plot and the characters and the character development. And the problem with this one is I'm not feeling the writing either. I'm not really enjoying it, which makes me really sad. I don't know if the problem is I am listening to the audiobook just because at the moment, me and reading, <laughs> I don't know. It's just been difficult for me to be in the mood to read at the moment. I've still feel in a funk. I have not been myself this whole year. And it's getting to the point now where I'm fed up. I speak to my patrons a lot about this, but um, noisy car. That's very rude, isn't it? This whole year, I've kind of felt like, how do I put this? <laughs> Just not myself, yeah, in a bit of a rut. Like creatively, reading enough like in my life I've just felt like in a bit of a rut and um I don't feel out of that yet and so I need the audiobook to actually get reading done but I don't know if that's perhaps making me not like the writing as much anyways I'm gonna go read probably like another 150 ish pages I don't know how long is it? No, maybe another 200 pages and then I'll check in with you again. It's Father's Day today in the UK. So we're going to go for a walk now. So I'll film some B-roll of that. But yeah, everyone pray for me that 
<laughs> I end up liking this because at the moment it's not going the best. Okay, please excuse my appearance. <laughs> Just... <laughs> you know those days when later in the week you need your hair to be at a certain point for a certain thing but your current hair washing schedule is not on the right trajectory and it's just it's a mess it's a mess <laughs> so the hair i mean she's puffy <laughs> i just made it worse but she's puffy but also i mean it's just not good is it it's just like i mean how do we i mean the head is big so like we have to have it either side i want to know what does it feel like to be so goddamn ugly Anyways, <laughs> do you think I'm gonna zoom you in a bit? I want you a bit closer. Okay, I am now 300 pages into Music Nightmares and I am sorry to say that my opinions have not changed drastically. I was talking actually to um, one of my patrons, Anna, who I, I said in Discord on, on Patreon, well, our, di our Patreon Discord, I said like, I'm just not feeling it this time and I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And Anna was like, I'm the same. It just doesn't have the same magical feeling that I think the first one does. I just don't, I don't know. I'm getting into it a, a little bit more. Um, certain events, I mean, the plot has started now. <laughs> I feel like for the first, you know, 300 pages, the plot has barely occurred. Like nothing's happened really. I feel like we're finally getting somewhere and the events of the actual book are gonna happen in this last 200 pages. So at least I'm thankful for that. <laughs> But I was trying to pinpoint it. I was trying to I was trying to pinpoint what my problem is. And I think the problem is in the first book, Laszlo, I would say, is our primary character. He's really our focus. I look a bit grey today. I need to start taking my iron tablets again though. No. That's fitting actually. Kind of. Oh, I'm knocking you. It's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> when the hair is a mess, everything's a mess. Here's the thing. If you ask me, let's just pin let's drop a drop a point. Let's drop a point in the whole book discussion for a sec. If you asked me to go outside in public looking like this today, or like to an event, I'd be like, no. It's crazy. It's crazy. I think this is crazy. No. Never. But putting myself on the internet for thousands of people to view, that's fine. But it doesn't feel like that. <laughs> I think the problem is in the first book, Laszlo is our primary character. And then this one, I'd say he's like the second main character, but just the kind of lens through which he viewed the world, I think is what made me like the first book. And we're kind of not viewing everything through his perspective, even though everything's like, is it third person? I know, I, I think I missed school when we discussed first person, second person, third person. And I know it's right, but I always doubt myself. <laughs> Yeah, I think that is perhaps the issue and the plot. I mean, the plot is one of my least favorite plots I've had in Lainey Tail, and I had that problem in Dora Smoke and Bone. She likes to like connect characters and stories, but I don't know if she always fully gets it. Like she likes to have maybe like two separate stories going on and connect them, but I don't feel like it really ever works when she does that. They kind of feel like two separate stories that are tenuously linked every time I've read her doing that. I'm just not enjoying it as much as I wanted to and I fucking go on the Goodreads and five stars, 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 five stars from like everyone I'm friends with on there. So like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do with that information? Like just cry to myself? Yeah, like I'm sad about it because I want to love what everyone else is loving and I don't want to be an outlier. I'm like, is there something wrong with me? Have I just left it too long between reading them? I don't know, but I am not feeling it in the same way anymore. So I finished Mise of Nightmares and let me just take my bookmark out. <laughs> Keep you in suspense. I finished Mise of Nightmares and I'm sorry to say my opinion of it has not really changed. I'm giving it a three star. No, you have played the wrong decision. I'm really disappointed. I'm really, really sad about this one. I mean, listen, at least it's another series ticked off. At least it's a book I've had for a few years now read. They're the positive we're gonna take from this. I still, by the end, loved the writing of this book, but I have multiple problems, a few of which I've told you already. I feel like Lady Taylor does this thing quite often. The end reveal, right, a villain or a big thing at the end will happen and then she'll go back and give you 50 pages from years and years and years in the past leading up to that moment explaining to you why that has happened and I just don't like that. I don't, 
don't, I don't like that development. Like, I just feel like, give me that before, let me have the tension leading up to it. This big event happens where you're kind of like, somewhat confused, or you feel like the foundations haven't been laid well enough, and then she goes back afterwards and then explains more to you, and you're like, girl. <laughs> And I guess my only other real big issue with this was that I didn't really feel like many of the characters had any character development in this. I would say there's two, maybe two and a half characters who I feel like are different people in any way to what they were at the start. A lot of the characters remain stagnant for me in this. I just feel like the plot in this was really lacking. It does not need to be 500 pages. It could easily be 300. There's a lot of time wasting. There's a lot of villains not being properly utilized <laughs> and everything being a bit convenient uh so yeah that's kind of all my thoughts i feel like i've shut on this book enough <laughs> we don't need to talk about it anymore but i'm sad because i love laney taylor the idea of laney taylor i love i love her writing but there's just something about her plots that don't seem to work for me so Yes, that's me done with this trilogy, at least. That's me, well at the end it says the end, or is it? And I'm like, girl, I, come on. <laughs> yes it is. You have shown an incredible lack of respect. So anyways, at least we finished three series in this vlog. That is such a relief off my chest. I went and I just counted on the spreadsheet and as of, I guess, the midpoint of the year, I'm currently in the middle of 33 series. So we only need to finish seven more in order to get to my goal of 26 series in the middle of. However, I probably will start a few series this year. So I guess the goal is to finish more than seven, but I feel like that's a pretty good position to be in. I think I started the year with 43, 44, something around that number series that I was in the middle of, perhaps even more. So I feel like we've been doing pretty well and this video definitely helped, like getting three out the way in one go really really helped but yeah 33 that we're currently in the middle of get that down to 26 and i'll be so happy and then i'll probably just start loads more series next year and just all the progress that we you know finished but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video let me know which of these duologies you want to read the most or if you have read them which ones you most enjoyed thank you so much for watching as always don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and i will see you very soon in another video bye